Welcome back to the Pig Trail Show. As always, we have our Hoops Insider, Kevin McPherson, joining us. But he's joining us from on location in Austin, Texas, as he just watched the Arkansas-Texas exhibition game. Unfortunately, the Razorbacks not looking so great in this exhibition uh, game because they lost 90-60 to to the Longhorns. Kevin A lot of things to learn from this matchup. That was something that Eric Musselman said after the game. What stood out as the biggest things that this group of hogs needs to work on moving forward? Everything. (laughs) And I think, and I think Musselman said that, you know, Arkansas scrapped and did what it could first 17, 18 minutes to stay in the game. But Texas really, you know, always had a lead, jumped out five, nothing. Arkansas would pull within a possession but you always felt like Texas was in control, even in a close game. Uh, you know, even in post game, I asked Musselman, you know, was there any takeaways and the positives that you guys did to, to hang in there? He was having none of it. He didn't want to look at it as, you know, you know, that his team had maybe positioned itself uh, to have a chance because, you know, it was early still. First half of basketball, Texas finishes the last minute or so with a 5 0 run to double its five point lead to 10. So double digit lead at halftime. And then when you bridge that end of that first half, into the early stages of the second half, it was a combined 31-point difference, 38-7 to spurt for Texas, if you want to call it a spurt, more like a long extended run. And in that run, you know, he had a 7-0 start to the second half and then a 20 to nothing run after Arkansas put, it, put together a couple of baskets, and, and the game was really over at that point. Texas was up by 34 points. Uh, you know, you're, you're not even to the midway point yet of the second half. And, you know, when you look back on it, when you say, when I say everything is something that our Arkansas can learn from, you say that because they were beaten in just about every phase of the game. Uh, Courtney, when we look at what Texas did and you've got to credit Texas, I thought they were more physical. I thought they played with more savvy. They're a veteran team. Arkansas has 11 newcomers. We're going to make that as an excuse today because it showed up on the court, uh, you know, the tougher team. And I thought, you know, Texas took advantage, very efficient. Shot nearly 55% from the field overall. Blistering hot from three, nearly 63%. They only shot 70% from the free throw line. Arkansas shot made two more free throws, but Arkansas was just under 70 at 69%. So even at the foul line, Mm -hmm. Texas was more efficient. But then you look across the board. Texas had 10 steals, forced 23 turnovers. I thought as much as anything, that might be the big takeaway because Arkansas struggled in Europe. We know that 21 turnovers a game. It reared its ugly head today, and a lot of that had to do with Texas, but I thought Arkansas, and I asked Mussman after the game, were your players slow to get off the ball when Texas's traps and and help rotations came? Was it just good Texas defense on those collapses and technique? You know, were your guys lacking confidence? And he he basically said all of the above. So, you you know, you're minus 10 in turnovers, 23 to Texas is 13. The, the Longhorns were plus 14 in points off turnovers, 26 to 12. So very dominant in that phase. But let's move across the board. First half, what helped Texas was really kind of owning the glass early on and getting on that offensive glass. Really, this is where I thought Arkansas might have a strength. But Texas seemed to be a little tougher and a little more confident going toward the basket, uh, playing a little bully ball, whether it was going to get those offensive rebounds or just trying to finish around the basket. And I thought Arkansas was a little tentative and ineffective on its, in its own attempts. Uh, Arkansas ended up getting close to even at the end of the game in rebounds, but it didn't matter at that point. Minus one there, minus two in, in second chance points. Yeah. But then we look at fast break. Texas was plus 10. Uh, we look at points in the paint. Texas uh, dominant there, plus 10 there. So there really wasn't a phase of the game when you start looking around for something that Arkansas did well. Uh, as close as it got on the glass, it was the first half it was down enough that it was part of the reason it fell behind by 10 points to that point. And then the roof kind of just caved in. Now, I give Musselman a lot of credit for scheduling this game. Arkansas could have beat up on another Division two, or, you know, had a chance to obviously play a game at home, not against a ranked opponent, uh, but they wanted to test themselves. And I see why Musselman did, because just your opening question, Courtney, wh- what were the things that stood out? It was everything that Arkansas really, if you look at this as a test, yeah. you could say, well, they failed miserably. But guess what? It doesn't count on the resume. There's 30, a 31 game regular season that starts in just over a week. And Arkansas has a lot of talent and a lot of positives to build on, even though you, we didn't necessarily see those positives in this game. Arkansas was so good in Europe, attacking the basket, getting out in transition. We didn't see that today. If I had one bright spot, uh, would be, you know, maybe looking at a couple of individual performances in, in patches. Nick Smith Jr. got off to another fast start scoring the ball. 
10 quick points, saw it efficiently, had a couple of steals early on, helped Arkansas stay in the game. Makai Mitchell, the big man, yeah. the transfer, yeah. the senior, who we have not seen much and heard much from, you know, showed a little bit in, in October exhibition play, whereas he didn't in Europe. And then he comes off the bench and gives Arkansas eight points in the first half, was yeah. efficient. I thought he was very, uh, had, very Had well. three rebounds there. You know, but, you know, it's really hard. If it, Jordan Walls had a big second half for Arkansas, really when the, pretty much when most of the – at that point, the game was over, but he was six of eight from the field, had 14 points, five rebounds in his homecoming. He's the five-star freshman from, from Texas, uh, but when, DeSoto. But when you start really looking at it, there's not much to find here. Even individual players, I think Mussman would say they all, you know, not only collectively fell, but it, it individually, each, each one of them needed to step up. And, and today it just didn't happen, Courtney. Oh, it just definitely didn't. You mentioned something in there that I thought was really huge. I mean, the the biggest stat that leaped out from the page for me was 23 turnovers. I mean, you're just shooting yourselves in the foot if you can't take care of the basketball. Kevin, for someone that has watched this team so much uh, with all of the preseason stuff they've been able to accomplish, do you think some of that being able to take care of the basketball will come with time because this group is young and still gelling? Or do you think it's something that they need to, you know, focus on a little bit more and deeper in practice? Well, I could promise, promise you that Melsman's made it a point of, of, of a, an area of attention in practice. I think it's, it is the fact that there are a lot of newcomers and youth, especially in the backcourt when you're starting to true freshmen, don't care how talented they are. This is a different level of basketball. But what I saw out there today uh, was only poor execution, but I thought Arkansas got nervous, mm -hmm. and I thought that they were shook a little bit with Texas's pressure. They haven't seen this kind of pressure and this kind of physicality, and I thought Arkansas, a, a lot of these were, uh, you know, self-inflicted wounds. And we heard a lot of, 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 of that when, when Musselman described the turnover problems in Europe. Uh, this, to me, took it to another level today. I know they had 30 turnovers in one game in Europe. Today, only 23, if you want to compare it to that game. Uh, but, you know, it was a consistent problem throughout the game. And when Arkansas was fairly close in the first half, the turnover seemed to be the one thing that kind of kept them from getting maybe forcing a tie game or maybe taking a lead. I don't know that that would have mattered, but it might have mattered. You never know in, in sports, you know, just if you take care of one aspect of the game, turnovers, and you win that battle. But to me, that was probably the biggest thing that in Texas work on the offensive glass in the first half. And then the hot shooting. I mean, Arkansas, yeah. some of that was on Arkansas, just not getting back in transition. Some of it was in transition for Texas. Uh, some of it was just Texas shooting over guys and, and not much you can do about that. And we know this Arkansas team is going to struggle from three. You know, I mentioned Texas making 10 of 16 for nearly 63%. Arkansas, only four. Uh, you know, four of 12 for 33%. And so even though that percentage is good relative to what Arkansas typically does, it's not great. It's a low volume and Texas was lighting it up. And, and this is again, a game where you're just kind of losing in so many different aspects and, and facets that it's hard to point to one or two things and say, well, if this, maybe it would have been a different outcome. That's why I think, I'm not saying Arkansas has to fully go back to the drawing board, but I think it's, it, it's going to wake some folks up in the program, whether it's coaches and players, uh, a, a combination of, of fans, obviously, that were paying attention to this. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think Arkansas has got work to do. Um, and, you know, they get three home games Yeah. Uh, once yeah. it starts in about a week or so before they go to Maui. And they're not going to play teams of the caliber of Texas. So maybe they can ramp things up, get over to Maui. There's quality competition over there. We'll kind of keep an eye on all of that. Uh, but And I think the other thing, going back to the exhibition game, you know, you hear people that have the philosophy – this is one of those games where you burn the tape and you don't look at it again. I think, I think opposite of that. I think there are yeah. areas again, where confidence, there was a point where things started to snowball. And even though Musman doesn't want to admit that maybe his team was in the game, even if, if you want to say, well, halfway through the game, that doesn't say a whole lot, but maybe there were some things they can look at and how they might've been able to correct course. And, and it may be stated in a little bit longer and giving themselves a chance because you just never know if you can do that. Yeah. I think you're totally, right on that kevin when you say things did snowball and i think it was that second half run that texas went on i mean it just looked like arkansas at least from what we were seeing back here that they just looked a little bit deflated i do want to bring up what you said because i saw a lot of fans on social media asking the question what went wrong and a lot of them came up with the answer well we're not a three-point shooting team we're not we, we can't shoot from the three we're not good and and i want to 
kind of counter that with Musselman has said all preseason long, we are not a three point shooting team. However, mm -hmm. what we need to do is defend the perimeter. Yeah. And I think when you give up 10 threes, like you said, ten, uh, Texas was 10 of 16 from the yeah. three point line, that can really hurt as well. How much do you think that defending the perimeter or something that they might, you know, make an emphasis of in practice in the next couple of weeks? Oh, they definitely, definitely will. Mossman's been saying for a while the defensive performances have been inconsistent. So when you go back and look at some of the defensive performances, even in Europe and then against Roger State, it's a little bit of fool's goal because it's not the level of competition like we saw today. And what we saw today was a runaway train. Uh, I, I do think, again, Arkansas, Texas did a good job of getting some threes in transition. Arkansas has got to figure out how to get back better and make sure that they are defending that three line, whether it's in half court or transition. But I think also really the way the game started, it was more about Texas kind of bully balling its way to the basket, just kind of – and Arkansas, you know, kind of chipped away and stayed in the game. And Texas, the floodgates opened when they started really knocking it down. You know, they did make five in the first half. Some of those came late in that first half when they expanded that lead to 10. And then you saw more of them in that flurry and that 20 to nothing run, especially, and the game was over. So, yeah, the three-point line, Arkansas does, is not a team that's, that's – when you look at the – the makeup of it is going to be a good three-point shooting team. They may have some games where they where they knock some shots down from three and give you hope, but for the most part, that's not what this team is good at. Uh, so you are going to have to defend that three line so that you're not so that you find some equalizer there and you're not getting blown away based just on that. But again, that's one aspect. Again, we talk turnovers. We can talk three-point shooting. We can look inside the arc where Texas, I thought, was much better at using their bodies and dribble drives and ball fakes and pump fakes to get to spots or will their way to the basket and finish. And Arkansas just looked kind of like they were reacting and not proactive. Yeah. Uh, and, and when that starts to happen in the snowball, now it doesn't seem like you can do anything right. And so, you know, we, we can break down the game. It's a 30 point loss. They trailed by as many as 34. Uh, and as we break it down, it, 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 as you peel it all back, you'll notice in just about every phase, Arkansas was beaten pretty soundly. Yeah, well, there was some good. You you highlighted some players that you thought did well. I want to go over a little bit. Jordan Walsh with 14 points. Nick Smith Jr. with 12 points. Uh, you had Kimani Johnson with six rebounds, right? I mean, there were some notable performances in this matchup. If you had to give an award, Kevin, maybe to an MVP of the loss, who would you give it to on Arkansas and why? <laughs> um. The bus driver, maybe, if he's <laughs> able to get him out of here fast, get him out of town quickly. Oh, my uh, goodness. Man, you put me on the spot, I don't, and I don't want to disparage any players. I mean, you know, I thought I thought Jordan Walsh, who hasn't necessarily, you know, you know, been a guy that's, you know, had game after game, consistent success when you go look back in the preseason, uh, or excuse me, the exhibition season in August in Europe, uh, even against Roger State, and I think today – uh, all things considered, you know, the second half, he had a couple of threes. He strung together some successful plays offensively. Uh, I noticed when he's not, when he doesn't have the ball, he can be very active around the basket, fighting for rebounds, scrappy. Um, so I think if, if I had to point to maybe one guy, six of eight shooting and, you know, getting to those 14 points to lead the team and, and five rebounds, some folks might say those are hollow stats, but you know, you got to point to something. He's a yeah. true freshman. He was back in his home state. So, you know, for him to at least do that much, is, all things considered, I think, you know, you might tip the hat there. I think Nick Smith Jr. start once again, uh, kept Arkansas in it. That's something that the Hogs can build on. Obviously, they need to see more uh, from him and the rest of the team in second halves because that was what was missing today. That's when, it, the, you know, the floodgates really opened. Uh, and then Kamani Johnson, you know, he's a warrior. He's in there battling for rebounds. Uh, I think he led the team with six today. That doesn't sound like a lot, but Arkansas did close the gap on the boards, and he was a guy that was a big part of that. Uh, and so I thought he did a, you know, a, a work, a, a, you know, a workmanlike performance on the glass with those six rebounds. It doesn't sound like a lot, but again, it, you know, it's something to point to. Uh, when Arkansas mostly lacked toughness, he was a guy that was in there battling. Yeah. 
yeah, you're completely right. I hate to put you on the spot like that, but it kind of feels like there has to be some silver lining. And I think maybe the silver lining over a player that did well might be the fact that you don't burn this tape, that you can go back and learn from some of the mistakes. Because I really do think with being all these with these young minds on the team and young players, you have guys that are going to make mistakes early on, but it's better you make the mistakes early on than later on in the season when it really counts, right? No doubt about it. And the one name I left out who I talked about earlier, but I'll mention again, was Makai Mitchell's first half. Yeah. Or he got all his eight points in that first half. He and he was he was effective. He had a block shot. He had one um, run of plays where he scored, then came back on defense, blocked a shot, was fouled after that, and then went and made two free throws, and it really helped Arkansas at that time. And he's a guy, again, because we haven't seen much of, and I thought he struggled in the second half, but because we haven't seen a lot from him in the way of production, that's something you can point to. You know, this is a game where, you know, again, because it's exhibition, uh, you know, just due to that fact, and there's 31 games regular season that start in just over a week, this doesn't count against the resume. I know fans are paying attention to it, matter to fans. I know some of these national gurus are looking at it. Arkansas had a recruit in the house. It's a five-star, Ron Holland, 6'8 forward out of Duncanville. It's down to Texas, Arkansas, UCLA. He saw this game today, uh, and he'll be making a decision fairly soon after trimming that list out of those three. Uh, so you had some things surrounding the game outside of it just being a charity exhibition. Obviously, the first game for Texas in the Moody Center, maybe they were part of their – run tonight had to do with opening up the new house you know beautiful place and you know maybe they use some of that for energy i'm not gonna you know take away from their performance and what they accomplished because it was a great game for texas uh, but at the same time with all the stuff that was surrounding this game you move on i don't yeah. think you throw it out the window completely i think you build all you, you watch that film you break it down and you figure out how to fix some things uh but i do think you put it out of your mind in terms of dwell you don't dwell on it you, you, because it doesn't count yeah, and and, and, you, and you take away an ugly game and say we're we're not going to let this happen again. This won't happen again. That's the mindset you've got to have. And then you go to work and you figure out how to fix some of these areas. Turning the basketball over, I still think is correctable. Three point shooting, I don't know that that is correctable. And I've said this for a while, uh, but the turnovers, I think Arkansas is going to be better rebounding the ball than they were today. I think that was the one huge misfire in an area where you thought for sure they could compete. And I know the final number said that they did, but when that game was being put away by Texas, Arkansas was on the wrong side of that too. And I just think, like I said, once it snowballed, Arkansas to me looked like they had their tail between their legs the way they were playing. I'm just going to say it like that. Uh, and I think that's what you learned from this. This will not happen again. That's got to be the mindset. That's got to be what you take away. I think that's a great note to end this on, Kevin. Thank you so much for joining us. Arkansas gets ready for their season opener on Monday, November 7th against North Dakota State. So that is coming around the corner. Let's hope they have a much better showing in that game than they did in this one. Thank you so much for joining us. As always, Kevin, we'll have much more pig drill coming up after the break.